it may be that everyone does not, everybody that uses an equilateral triangle, an equilateral triangle being a, a three-sided figure and all the sides, sides are uh, the same length, uh, all the angles are exactly uh, the same. Uh, everybody uses this as an illustration about the Trinity uh, may not teach it the same way. And uh, so I don't want to be identified uh, in my teaching with any and everybody uh, that uses an equilateral triangle. Uh, but uh, the way that the way that I use it, uh, did I did I do a good job on drawing this? Yes, it all looks equal. Perfect. Uh, uh, okay, you got uh, uh, three angles. Now, some of you may or may not know uh, that these angles add up to what's called a hundred and eighty degrees. And this is a 60 degree angle. Uh, the top one's a 60 degree angle. And this is a 60 degree angle. Uh, you come out one inch from this point, or one inch from this point, same here. One inch here, one inch here. This is going to be the same distance across here that it is across here across here and uh, so then these ang angles are equal how much of now when we talk about the angle uh, I'm not just talking about the what do you call this point where the angle starts anybody knows uh, I'm not just talking about this point I'm talking about you start here here and really you could keep going okay so that's the angle uh, in that sense how much of this triangle does angle B take in all of it because from this point those lines keep going Okay. Uh, a point. Well, we'll call that's what we'll call a point. We'll call it a point. <laughs> but the point of angle C. How much of this triangle does that angle take in? Well, what about A? Okay. So there, there is a sense in which A. Angle A is the whole triangle. Angle B is the whole triangle, or takes in everything that's in the triangle. The C takes in everything that's in the triangle. I mean to infinity. And uh, the, you can look at the attributes of, of God that way. Uh, there's no limit to his love, uh, limitless, okay? And uh, whatever attribute you can name, uh, uh, mercy, compassion, uh, uh, eternity, uh, no, no end uh, to it. And that can be said about either one of these angles. So, but how many triangles do you have? Just one. You've got these three angles. And it takes in the whole triangle. Or everything that's in the triangle. Uh, but there's just one triangle. Now as equal as they are. A, B, and C. A is not B. And B is not C. And C is not A. 
There's three distinct points. I didn't say separate. I said distinct. Okay. And so, although it's three distinct points, these three, and there are three, there's three points. These three are one. So, this illustration, the tri triangle represents uh, God or the Godhead. Uh, when you're talking uh, about, okay, there's three persons. There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. One is just as much divine as the other. When it comes to their nature and their deity and what it means to be divine, uh, you can't say that B is less of this triangle than what A is. So, in relation to the persons in the Godhead, all three of them are all powerful, all knowing, uh, everywhere present. Uh, and there are so that the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Ghost is God. And we could uh, go into several weeks and show you scripture references uh, that says that about each of these uh, persons. Uh, but it's a mystery. That the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Ghost, <coughs> the Holy Ghost is not the Father. A is not B, B is not C, C is not A. But all of them take in uh, the fullness uh, of the Godhead. Uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, that's what this illustration. Uh, uh, is a map. So uh, you could say in pointing to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost or even direction is. But out here uh, it is not. Do you follow that? Uh, A is not B. But A is the whole triangle. And B is the whole triangle. Uh, any questions on this uh, uh, illustration. Okay. Now what does that mean? Now, people have come up with all kind of doctrines uh, as relates uh, to the Father, the Son, uh, and the Holy Ghost, and uh, to the uh, Godhead. And so you have what some, what I've just described to you, those uh, who hold to the uh, uh, view as I meant to explain it, as the Bible teaches it. Uh, usually called Trinitarians. Uh, 
but there are those who are called, okay, there's uh, Trinitarians. I guess you could say Unitarians or Oneness. And then really there are, I guess you'd say, polytheists. The Unitarians say there's just one person in the Godhead. And he manifests himself in at least three ways. The most three prominent ways are Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But he can manifest himself however uh, he chooses. But they emphasize the Lord our God is one. Is that true? Uh, certainly the Lord our God uh, is one. Uh, but they uh, failed uh, to teach that he eternally exists in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, there are those who claim to be Trinitarians. That if you talk to them very long, uh, you'll find out that what they're saying is that there, there are three gods. To say there's three gods is just as false a doctrine uh, as Jesus only. So there is one God eternally existing in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Uh, now, sometimes the way these uh, uh, doctrines are uh, presented, another way of saying this, this is a three false doctrines. There's tritheism. And some of this is very similar to what I've always said. Uh, modalism. And then sub subordinationism. Okay, now, three points of doctrine that the Bible certainly teaches. One is uh, that each person uh, is God or uh, divine. Bible teaches uh, that God is three persons. Uh, the Bible teaches that there is one God. Now it's a mystery. But too often, 
people will hope will leave one of these out. And talking about uh, the Godhead. And you can't do that. The Bible teaches uh, all three. Uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost uh, are equal uh, as to their nature uh, and their uh, attributes. Now, they may differ uh, in their works uh, as ordained before the foundation of, of the world, but as far as you're talking about what God is, uh, God is love, God is eternal, God is all-powerful, God is everywhere, God is all-knowing, God is all-just, all-forgiving. That applies in its fullness to either of the persons of the Trinity. Now, in various works, uh, say like, for instance, in, uh, in creation, uh, all three persons may be involved to an extent, uh, but first and primary, uh, uh, creation seems to be attributed to the Father. Uh, redemption uh, to the Son. Uh, the Father sends the Son. The Son sends the Holy Ghost. Neither of them send the Father. You won't find where the Son sends the Father anywhere or where the Holy Ghost sends the Father anywhere. So there are certain distinctions uh, in their works and in their offices, but when it comes to uh, their uh, nature uh, and their uh, attributes, uh, each one of them is just as fully divine uh, as the other. A lot of differences in us as persons uh, in this place tonight. We have distinct personalities. Uh, but believe it or not, uh, I'm just as human as you are. You're just as human as I am. There's not a person here that's more or less human than the other is. And even so it is with the person's of the Godhead. While they may be distinct as relates to their office and, and their works, uh, when it comes to them being uh, divine, each person is divine. And the Bible clearly teaches that they are distinct persons, and yet the Bible teaches that there is just one God. Now, uh, let's say that, that you leave um, okay let's say uh, that you believe there are uh, are three persons in the Godhead And you believe each person is divine. But somehow, you, you really don't rest this about one God. You leave this one out, you come out with what's called tritheism. You come out with three gods. Uh, now, uh, uh, modalism you believe there's one God and he manifests his deity in at least three different ways but you don't Leave those three different ways is really three different persons. So you leave this one out. That's modalism. 
God expresses himself in different modes, uh, different ways, but he's all the same person. Uh, so tritheism, we leave this out, modalism, we leave this one out, and then subordination would accept these two, but would leave this one out. That is, there is one God, there's three persons, but somehow the Father is a little more divine than the Son. Or the Son is a little more divine than the Holy Ghost. Uh, one is uh, subordinate uh, to the other, not just in office and works, but in their uh, very nature. Uh, so those are, are some uh, heresies uh, that you have to, uh, to watch out for. But simply stated, uh, the doctrine of the Trinity, uh, there is one God, eternally existing in three persons, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Amen? Now, <coughs> there's various forms of teaching, and some like uh, one method better than the other. Uh, there's what's called uh, inductive reasoning and uh, deductive reasoning. Uh, but this is the conclusion that you come out with uh, if you do a thorough, thorough study uh, of the scriptures. Uh, this summarizes uh, how it all comes out. Uh, this is, we've explained the conclusion of the matter. Uh, rather than starting off from a scratch and seeing how we got there. Now, thank God somebody, well, I don't want to call the scripture scratch. <laughs> but somebody uh, searched the scriptures out they saw what the Bible had to say. Uh, they prayed over it. The Holy Ghost helped them to, uh, to understand. And uh, this is uh, the uh, conclusion. But as to what led to this conclusion. So we're, we're sort of coming in uh, the back door and starting off with, uh, with the conclusion. But does the Bible teach uh, that there is one God? Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And uh, those who would teach, well, the only person is that would teach that, uh, say, Jesus is a different God uh, than the Father. But Colossians 2 and 9 said, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now there are Go, go a whole year on this. Uh, but there's various scriptures that uh, point to uh, all three sons or, or all three persons. Uh, what about the baptism of Jesus? Somebody want to comment on this? Uh, 
Yeah, I love the baptism of Jesus specifically because we have a reference to all three persons of the Godhead at one time, at one place. So we see Jesus being baptized in the Spirit descending upon him. So here we have God the Son, and we have the Spirit descending upon him. And at the same time, you hear the voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear ye him. Nah, that, that, that's not exactly the word, but uh, that we hear the voice from heaven. We hear God speaking, God the Father speaking. This is my Son. So if we hear God saying, This is my Son, we see the Spirit descending in a, in a bodily form as a dove, and we have Jesus, whom we know to be the Son, in that very instance, that, that completely cancels out modalism. It can't, God can't become, come in three individual modes, one at a time, individually, right. because here we have a, a perfect example of him showing up on the scene in all three ways, in all three modes, so to speak, in all three persons of the Godhead, Simultaneously. Yes. Amen. And you know, Father is talking about uh, water baptism. What what about the baptismal formula? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay. So that mentions uh, uh, all three uh, persons. Uh, there are various uh, uh, benedictions or blessings announced uh, at the close uh, of some of the Pauline epistles. Uh, such as 2 Corinthians 13 and 14. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, which would seem to be a reference to the Father, and the communion of the Holy Ghost uh, be with you all. Amen. Uh, what about uh, the creation? Let us. Let us. Mm -hmm. Let us. Uh, make man. And um, uh, so, so you have uh, uh, also in the Hebrew, you have the name of, of God or Elohim. Uh, in the uh, plural, uh, just like in English, uh, an S on the end of the word can mean plural. Uh, there are suffixes in, in the Hebrew. And uh, so when it speaks there, uh, of God and uh, uh, so uh, who was God talking to when he said uh, let us make uh, man you have the father speaking you have Jesus as the spoken word and you have the spirit of God said moving upon the face uh, of the deep. <clears throat> now, in the handout, uh, it mentions uh, different illustrations people have given to try to illustrate the, uh, the Trinity. Uh, some would compare it to water in three forms, uh, liquid ice, uh, steam. Um, now these three persons, uh, they always act uh, uh, in unity. As we just said of, uh, of the creation. Uh, John chapter 1 said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was made flesh, and Verse 14 said, and dwell among us, and we beheld his glory as uh, the only begotten of the Father, uh, full of grace uh, and uh, truth. But they acted in unity in creation. The Father spoke, uh, the Son was the word spoken, and the Holy Ghost moved on the face of the water. In the uh, incarnation, the word incarnation has to do with the word being made flesh. Uh, God the Father uh, gave his only son. Uh, God the Son was born into the world. Uh, God the Spirit uh, came upon Mary to cause conception. 
uh, in redemption. Uh, the Father accepted the sacrifice of Calvary. Uh, the Son uh, was the sacrifice. And we're told in Hebrews 9 and 14 that Jesus offered himself through the eternal spirit. Uh, in salvation, uh, God the Father received the prodigal son from the uh, a far country. Uh, in Luke 15, and also uh, in Luke 15, the son is the shepherd uh, that goes to seek uh, the lost sheep. Uh, the spirit seals the, the new convert. <coughs> So each of these persons have a part in our salvation. Uh, in our communion or our fellowship uh, with God. Uh, the Father invites us. Uh, the Son reconciles us. And the Spirit affects uh, that communion. In prayer, the Father receives the request. We pray in the name of the Son and the Spirit. Uh, directs us uh, in our uh, requests. And we don't know what to pray for. He can make intercession for us. In glory, the Father will receive the millennial uh, kingdom. Uh, the Son will change our vile bodies to be like His. And the Spirit uh, gives the invitation uh, to that glorification. The spirit uh, and the bride say come. And then uh, in uh, regeneration God the Father records the new name and glory. Uh, the Son cleanses the sin in his precious blood and the spirit performs the transforming miracle uh, of the new birth. The pronouns, or, or pardon me, the prepositions uh, in Scripture, uh, those little, so often two-letter words can say a lot. Uh, uh, all things uh, are of the Father, through the Son, and by the Spirit. Do you pick up on the difference there? Uh, of the Father, He is the source of all things. Uh, through the Son, uh, He is the mediator. By the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is the agent uh, who really makes these things uh, uh, real uh, uh, to us. Now, when we said uh, that all three of these persons are equal in their attributes, uh, there's a list of attributes here in the handout, and that list could be much longer. But what can be said of one can be said of the other. And in the handouts are given scriptures that will prove this. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. All three are eternal. All three are all powerful. Each one is all knowing. Each one is all present. He is a, a thrice a holy uh, God. Uh, one is just as much truth as the other. Uh, in their good will, they're the same. In the communion, uh, they are, or fellowship, uh, they are the same. We can have fellowship with, uh, with each of them. Now, having said all this, and uh, I challenge you, uh, we made statement after statement uh, that there are verses uh, to go with this and I challenge you to go back and uh, uh, read uh, these verses but having said all this uh, uh, it's still uh, a mystery <coughs> alright uh, who 
has a comment on this? I think there are multiple times throughout Scripture that we see instances just like uh, baptism where we have multiple uh, persons in one scene. So I, I believe uh, when Jesus was praying one time, it might have been around the resurrection of Lazarus, I, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, uh, there was a voice heard from heaven while Jesus was standing there on the Mount of Transfiguration. He, he was standing there, a voice was heard from the clouds. This is, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. That's, uh, and then in, in different situations we have that, and, and in multiple books we have uh, the baptism of John, uh, John the Baptist uh, baptizing Jesus uh, each of these reiterating the same point, so that, I, I, and I, if I feel confident that this is on purpose, this wasn't a, a coincidence, but the reason was that we needed to understand that these three exist simultaneously, and of course we have, as, as you've mentioned, the creation, and that uh, God was, God spoke, the Word uh, did, and the uh, Holy Spirit moved. Uh, all three of them were in the same place at the same time, working uh, the creation. And so I don't, like I said, I don't think it's any accident that these three, these uh, multiple instances of the persons of the Godhead are seen at any given time. Of course, we have the, the prayer of Jesus in uh, John chapter 17. And he says, I am, I am in the Father and the Father in me, and we are one. And so, once again, we have multiple, multiple instances throughout Scripture where we see the, the three in one very clearly defined. We see, uh, we have opportunities through Scripture to see that, that they are in the same place at the same time, uh, defeating modalism, completely defying any possibility that there could be a God who just comes as he pleases and if he comes as the son, then he's left heaven and he's not there anymore. And, and then when, when he goes back to the Father, then he sends the Holy Ghost because he's not in heaven anymore. So is, if we have the Holy Spirit with us today, is God not in heaven? Because he can't, according to modalism, he can't be in more than one place at once. He's either God the Father or God the Son or God the Holy Spirit. So if, we have, if I have the Holy Spirit dwelling in me, then God can't be sitting on the throne, uh, according to that line of thinking. I, I could be wrong. All right. Um, you mentioned John uh, 17. Uh, the words of, of Jesus uh, in between the uh, Lord's Supper and uh, uh, riding up to his betrayal. Uh, John chapters 14 through 17 uh, really speak to me uh, as it relates to some things we mentioned uh, here tonight. Uh, if you turn to John chapter 14, say the first six verses. Somebody want to comment on how that would relate to anything that's been said here tonight. to himself and God as his father um, in the very beginning. Okay. He concluded those verses by saying, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Um, the only way to the only Father uh, now, what about, uh, say, in verses uh, 7 uh, through 15? Did you come across a 
Bible verse or any verses related to some things we've said? Verse 11 says, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. One thing that stands out to me uh, in these chapters, uh, John 14, 15, 16, and 17, are the personal programs. Mm -hmm. uh, in grammar school, okay, there's three persons. I am, uh, you are, he, she, it, is. We are, you are, they are. Uh, I refers to the person doing the speaking. Uh, uh, you refers to the person who is being spoken to. And he, she, or it, or, or they, uh, refers to the persons who are being spoken about. But this is, this is how we communicate with one another as a community. If we didn't have these concepts of these personal programs, <laughs> would I know whether I'm me or whether I'm you or whether I'm somebody else? And God's not, God wouldn't try to deceive us. He wouldn't use first, second, third person pronouns in relation to uh, the Godhead and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, unless that's uh, the way that it is, that, that they are three uh, distinct uh, persons. Okay, uh, let's look at, uh, for instance, uh, verses uh, 16 through 18. John, the 14th chapter of John. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. It's all three of them right there together. Why would you pray to someone that you were? Being uh, not unique, separate individuals, there would be no need. But since they are distinct and unique, and separate while at the same time one. That seems reasonable in that according to standard Trinitarianism as we believe it, uh, it would make sense for Jesus the Son to pray to God the Father to send the Holy Spirit. He didn't say, I'll pray, I'll pray to myself and I'll send you myself in another form. That's not what Jesus said to the disciples. He said, I'll pray to the Father. I, once again, going back to your pronouns there, that's me, will pray to the Father, which is somebody else. And he will give you another comforter, which is altogether another person of the Godhead. All right. What about verses uh, 24 through 26? Hmm. Um, uh, the 14th chapter of John. If a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Verse 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Last part of verse 24 said, The word of which he hear is not mine, uh, but the Father's which sent me. They're, they're in unity. They're in uh, agreement. Um, and the Father didn't 
sent himself. Right. He sent his son. Right. And that's what what Jesus says there too. He says, paraphrasing, my father sent me. Verse 28, if you love me, you would rejoice because I said, I go to the Father. Okay, um, let's skip over some in the 15th chapter. Uh, start glancing there around verse uh, 21. All these things uh, will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Verse 26, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Okay. Let's write on 